Hello, I'm Pat O'Hare, Chief Market Analyst for Briefing.com. Today is Monday, January 26th. In his big picture column this week, Briefing.com CEO Dick Green takes a look at the early return from fourth quarter earnings season. In this column, he writes that fourth quarter earnings reports have been not surprisingly dismal. Guidance for 2009 has been worse. The trends in earnings expectations do not augur well for an improvement in market sentiment. Through Friday, 98 of the S&P 500 companies had reported earnings. Now, it is still early, nevertheless, the trends are lousy. To date, just 51% of companies have reported earnings above expectations. That sounds decent, but typically 62% to 65% of companies will report earnings above expectations. Wall Street simply lowers forecasts ahead of the reports enough to ensure that many companies will beat published earnings expectations. This quarter, expectations were not lowered enough. More striking, a whopping 41% of companies have reported below expectations. This is well above the typical 15% to 17%. Clearly, a lot of companies are struggling even worse than lowered Wall Street expectations had presumed. These early percentages may moderate as more data are reported. Many of the reports so far have come from financial and other companies that have put out particularly bad news. Nevertheless, the reports so far have been extremely poor, with a huge number of companies reporting well below expectations. The blended mix of fourth quarter reports to date, with forecasts for the remaining reports, calls for a total decline of fourth quarter earnings of approximately 25% to 30%. Aggregate operating earnings for the S&P 500 for the fourth quarter of 2008 are now expected to be $11.44. For the previous four quarters, and given the current level of the S&P 500, we get a seemingly impressively low price-to-earnings multiple of 12.8 on trailing earnings for the S&P 500 through the third quarter data. Putting fourth quarter actuals and estimates into the data puts the price-to-earnings multiple for trailing earnings at 13.6. That too is not bad. Of course, the problem is that earnings are trending sharply lower. The approximate 30% drop in fourth quarter earnings is, is expected to be followed further uh, by further declines in 2009. Current Wall Street forecasts call for a decline of 22% in the first quarter compared to the first quarter of 2008 and a decline of 18% in the second quarter. Not surprisingly, the ever-optimistic Wall Street sees improvement in the second half of the year. Third quarter estimates are for a decline of about 4% and a gain in the fourth quarter compared to the lousy 2008 reports. For the year as a whole, expectations sum up to about a 5% drop in earnings. If, the for, if these forecasts are correct, then the S&P 500 is currently trading at a forward price to earnings multiple of 14.3. That is respectable value. The problem, of course, is that the 2009 earnings presume a much better second half of the year than first half. There are reasonable fears that second half expectations are far too optimistic. If the current fourth quarter earnings are annualized, the current price to earnings multiple is 18. If there is an assumption that earnings decline even more than expected in upcoming quarters, the forward price to earnings multiple would be even higher. These expectations and fears at worst explain current market valuations. Guidance for companies has, for the most part, been extremely cautious. Every day there are companies putting out 2009 guidance that is below current Wall Street estimates. Today, Kimberly Clark and Pfizer are already on that list. Last week included Xerox, Lockheed Martin, eBay, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, and Parker Hannafin, and earnings season is just getting started. The poor guidance is what has driven down first and second quarter expectations, and only 20% of the S&P 500 has reported to date. Further reductions in aggregate earnings are likely as earnings season progresses. The disappointing stock market reaction to corporate guidance shows that expectations for 2009 are still too high. The stock market is not likely to be able to put together any sustained rally until expectations are reined in. There is optimism that a fiscal stimulus package will help the economic trends. That could happen, but it also might not. It will take time to put together a government spending package that will actually have an economic impact, and the degree to which that will help earnings is extremely hard to assess. There is a risk that the markets are overly optimistic about the ability of 535 congressmen to put together a government program that will actually work as well as Wall Street currently projects. The stock market can easily turn to optimism at any time. The fourth quarter reports so far and the guidance provided just don't suggest a shift in sentiment will be due to a hard data. A change in near-term sentiment would have to be due to a belief that fiscal and monetary policy will be successful. To read Dick's article in its entirety, put your cursor on the R View tab at the top of the page and select the big picture, which is the fourth page listed on the drop down menu. I'm Pat O'Hare for Dick Green and Briefing.com. Thanks for listening.